I'm Doth Savick, and this is my review of the Ace Box Pro. This cart retails for $599 to $569, depending on which package you get. There's three packages in total. This, uh, what I'm reviewing today, is the, the full top tier Pro package for retailing at $599. I paid just about half of that for this setup. The, I talked with the owner, Nathan, and he gave me a great deal in trade for doing testing and then making this full review for the cart. As I have this cart set up currently, I have two additional items on here. I've put a, a pouch that I've got hanging on one side, and then I've also got a Prodigy putter pouch hanging on there. On the inside of the bottom box, I also have an extra bag that I have inside there. Otherwise, every part of the cart that you'll be seeing is how it ships. On the back of the cart here, we've got two different knobs that hold the handle pole in place and lock the upper box in place as well. The first knob with a couple turns comes free and we can dislocate. That allows us to lift free the top box if we wish to gain access to the bottom. The second knob is also a few turns and it'll come free. And then we have a, a molded piece of plastic down here that is holding the bottom of that handle in place. The bar for the handle is a one by one inch aluminum 8020 bar. You can see it's got a cross frame structure in the middle. This thing is just sturdy as can be. It's also got a U channel on one face of the square bar, which makes it really versatile and you're able to mount all kinds of different things to this bar. The custom design handle that we have on here is a combination of metal and a 3D printed polymer. The upper portion is powder coated and then we've got rivets straight through. The bottom of the handle is a molded 3D printed piece which has a, a little bit of a little bit of squish to it. It's kind of a cushioned grip. It, it feels really nice with your fingers in those in those grooves there. It, it lets you give it a nice good squeeze on it, dampen some of the shakes that you get through the cart and uh, overall provides a pretty good experience. I did find that with some of the other 3D printed pieces on here, there were some, some sharp edges. I, I came through and actually filed a little bit of the corners and stuff um, as I'm grabbing it so that some of, these, some of these corners here weren't quite as sharp. The next piece down is another uh, 3D printed piece that is slid up onto the handle. It's got a nice uh, little ace engraving there. And then on this side here, you've got a channel that accepts the umbrella. The top piece of the umbrella clips in here when you have the umbrella open. And then on this side of it, we've got a mount for an action camera. So you can slide in the mount for your GoPro or you can get all sorts of different mounting pieces that fit. Just generically looking up an uh, action camera mount is what me, let me find uh, different pieces that could fit in there. The next piece down is another piece 3D printed that slid onto the handle and we have a, another cutout to accept the umbrella when you have the umbrella in the open position. There's a little piece on here that captures apply some pressure onto that umbrella to help keep it in there. The big claw that you see out here is to hold the umbrella in place when it, the umbrella is being stored. Um, this is also soft. You can see it's flexible. So that pries open as we push the umbrella in. Now it holds the umbrella really well. You can see that there's also a spot there to hold a pencil. It is just the perfect size to firmly hold a small golf pencil in place. And then the last piece going on there is a little grommet and eyelet that we can, you know, put a little chain or a rope through if you want to hang some pieces off of that handle. 
Now you saw that I had the Prodigy putter pouch hanging on there. What I did to keep that pouch from sliding away was to add a little bolt. Um, that's just inside the U-channel there. I can slide that up and down. So I just put it in a spot where when the bag came down, it was, it was hitting that. Now this is, I just bought a you know, whole batch of these off the internet. And what that looks like is a little nut on the end that's shaped just such that it'll fit well into that channel and then a screw that goes straight into it. With that, you could mount, I mean, anything that you can imagine to this pole. It definitely gives a, adds a lot of versatility. If you do want to add on a, a putter pouch instead of running the cart uh, as it comes, then you've got, you've got the option to bolt all sorts of little things, a little pouch on there for a range finder, cell phone holder, anything like that. You know, this screw is a, is a little bit longer, but you definitely could put a shorter screw through there if you'd like uh, to get something mounted more flush. For the hand screw that holds the upper box in place, you can see the screw is held in, in place with a 3D printed surround. On the face of it, you can see there's a channel on top of the bolt, and that lets you look down to see how well that bolt is being pushed into the box. The first couple times that you screw that down, it can be a little bit finicky. It takes a little bit to get the right feel for it. And you can see that I can smoothly pull that back and forth, and that's because the neck on this bolt has been smoothed out. We've got the normal threading towards the tip of the bolt, but then towards the hand screw portion, the neck has been smoothed. On the lower hand screw, the 3D printed surround also has a, a bulge off on the side, and that's what ex accepts the tip of the umbrella when you're pushing the umbrella down into the stored position. Let's take a look at this bolt for the upper box. You can see that there's a little bit of a gap between the handle and the upper box frame as it's sitting right now. I do have the bottom bolt tightened. I can just press on the handle slightly and it'll pull in. Now, if I've left the handle out, but do have the bolt pressed in, it's not necessarily going to catch threading right there. So one way or another, you do need to apply a little bit of pressure and that will get it to catch. And then it's really just a couple of turns to get that thing to snug up. The 3D printed surround acts as a, like a soft washer there. So you don't have to like crank down super tight. You just want to get it snug against that washer and then it's going to be really firm. You also get the, the little kind of viewfinder there. When removing the upper box, a couple turns is enough to get that to disengage and you can feel that little bit of movement when it happens. Now the bolt can remain overlapping with the edge of the back panel as I have it right now. And that means if I go and try to lift the box that I'm going to catch on the edge of the bolt, that's why the neck is uh, ground free from threading so that once that has disengaged, you can do a little pull on that and it'll pull the bolt back far enough that we are then completely clear and we won't catch it all when we're lifting the top box free. With this cart, there's two main materials used. On the panels, we have a plastic material that is each side of the box. Uh, everything that is uh, molded on the front for putter pocket and the mini holder. And then we have metal uh, angled pieces on each corner. And then the main frame is square bar. The wheels on this cart are a plastic frame and then the tires are solid. Um, there's, no, there's no air inside these. They are super hard. 
don't have to worry about flats. They don't pick up goat heads particularly well. They goat heads will stick a little bit. And then we've got a cool decal right on the inside of the wheel. Disc, ace, eat, sleep. Those wheels have a shaft that runs all the way through the bottom edge of that frame. It's a half inch bar, very, very sturdy axle. On the back of the cart here, we've got two beverage holders. I've got 12 ounce cans in there now. The beverage holders can be adjusted um, by, by grabbing that frame and bending it. I've opened them and closed them a couple of times to fit different size bottles. These are not big enough to carry a Nalgene. If you do want to carry a bigger bottle like that, you'll need to pull those two bolts out and then fit it with another beverage carrier. You'll have to order one yourself um, that can fit a Nalgene or whatever size bottle you wish. To store the umbrella, the tip of it goes right down into that hole in the bottom box holder. And then we come up to the top and this is designed such that the umbrella just perfectly fits into that holder there. That thing is sturdy. You heard it snap in. It is not going to come out easily. Um, you don't have to worry about it falling off while the cart's bouncing around on the course or anything like that. Very secure. To mount the umbrella while it's open, we've got a double keeper. Um, both the shaft of the umbrella pushes into this piece here and then in the bottom. Now in the bottom, it's gated. There is a little pulled away pressure tab there that helps secure it in place. This is a, this is a firm press to get it in. You can hear it snap as it goes in there. And then this piece comes out to really make sure that that shaft is not going to pull out before you want it to. You can change the height of this by pressing it up or, or sliding it down and it's held nice and firm either way. To pull that back out, you press in on the little keeper and then it'll uh, twist right out of there for you. Definitely a unique design to hold the putter in place on this putter pocket. I know it's a little hard to tell. I've had to go super overexposed to let you see inside, but the, the back wall here is actually cut and pressed forward. Uh, you can see how I'm pushing back against that panel. With that back piece being heat molded and sprung forward, um, it, it keeps a lot, of, a lot of tension on that putter. It's not hard to get out, but you can see it doesn't just drop all the way into the slot by itself either. It, it is held firmly. That stops it from bouncing around and, and rattling, so you really don't have to worry about it bouncing out or making a whole bunch of noise. It's a pretty cool little trick they figured out to hold that in place. The mini marker cutout is a pretty specific size. Uh, definitely not every mini I have fits in there. You know, if they made it that large, then I think the smaller minis would just be bouncing around. So that's something you'll have to consider. You may not be able to fit your favorite mini in there, but you also won't be having problems finding one that does fit. It's the, the most standard size, I think, is, is what fits in there. And it's, it's captured well. That's also not going to bounce out on its own. You can see that it doesn't just fall in place. I actually have to press it, press it to get it in there. It's a pretty good fit. You can hear pretty plasticky noises as I'm interacting with that. And that's one of the things that you get with this cart. Um, with a lot of these surfaces being this plastic, it does make it a little bit noisy. This is kind of the, the main show here. And this is one of my favorite things about this cart is having it set with the lid open. Like I found myself you know, throwing a drive and then getting ready to take my putter and, and walk to putt. And even if I didn't need to access this main area, I was lifting the lid anyways, because I think this just, I don't know, it's so cool. It's a really neat way to present the cart. Like it's just, it's so neat looking. The feel of opening that lid is really cool as well. The magnet that I mentioned earlier that's embedded in the handle, the other side of it, there's a magnet stuck, or two, 
uh, right, right in here. And you can see the lid, it's not quite touching the handle. It's hovering there in place, but it is snaps. It is, it is held by that magnet, which is really neat. The other side of the magnet, you can stick your bottle opener there. This is a really cool, hefty. Uh, I, I really like the feel of this bottle opener. It'll sit by itself, hung sideways there, or you can tuck one edge down under the scorecard if you want to set it that way. It stays securely. I've not had issues with it going anywhere. That magnet's quite strong. You've got a nice molded section here that holds both your custom scorecard in place, um, the Sharpie to write on the scorecard, and then also like really firmly holds a, another pencil if you want. This scorecard is pretty unique. It's got a, a thick piece of plastic on the back and some Velcro there. That Velcro helps hold it a little bit more firm in place. It doesn't rattle around. And then it's sort of a reusable feel, you know, a coated scorecard on top. Now it's designed to be used, and this is what they send with it, a fine tip Sharpie. And I found that a really enjoyable experience. To use that Sharpie on here, just, just feels nice. It writes really well. I thought that it, at first, as I was going through and using scores and whatnot, that I'd have to worry about this smudging, but really within just moments, it's, it's dry. You don't have to worry about that smudging off. Now this also comes with a little uh, microfiber type towel and then some alcohol wipes to clean the scorecard off after. I partially cleaned the scorecard the first time I used it. I was curious to just let some of that Sharpie sit on there for even longer. I waited a couple of weeks and then used again the alcohol pads and they weren't good enough to get it off. I mean it partially removed the Sharpie. The next thing I tried after that was some isopropyl alcohol with the little paper towel and isopropyl alcohol it just it just wiped off super clean so that might seem like and quite a burden or extra step to have to go through and clean it with alcohol pads or isopropyl alcohol but i don't think it's too big of a deal um, you, you probably wait till you get home to do that and then you don't have to carry that stuff with you the overall feel of this just being like so hefty I don't have to like pull a disc and lay my other score you know a scorecard on the disc to make it firm this, this was I enjoyed using this scorecard more than I than I thought I would it's set up for 27 holes also if you're playing some some longer courses or maybe three times through a nine hole course something like that the main disc storage in the upper box I have it just loaded right now, and I, this is how I've been carrying it, full discs across the top for, for the most part. In here, uh, currently, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 drivers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 putters in mids, so 24, plus with the Prodigy uh, putter pocket I have up on the handle, two putters there. So it is a, it's a pretty, pretty hefty load. Certainly more discs than I think most people carry. Another option is utilizing the dividers that, that come in here. You can pull an entire section out and leave that open for, you know, storing whatever other items you've got, if you want to drop a towel in there. I've experimented with a few different bags. You know, one of the, one of the bags I've used is actually from a little 511 backpack I've got. You know, plenty of room to do keys and uh, wallet and everything like that. And just set, set that in there and then I've got this whole extra, you know, storage area. You could drop some smaller zippered pockets like this filled with whatever you'd like and, and put them in there or go discs all the way across. You could even pull, pull the dividers out if you want. Now you can see that the dividers are plastic. 
There's also one large piece of plastic that is bent, pushed, pushed in this way and is a U-shaped channel. And then it has slots cut in it for these dividers to be pushed in. Since I've got this cart, Nathan has made a change and added a rubberized material to dampen the noise from it. Now, I, he showed me what uh, he was doing on the newer ones. So I went ahead and copied it. I didn't do it exactly as he's doing. So mine's not quite as pretty. You can see it's bulging out a little bit. I've not yet spent the time just to make it perfect. It did help a lot in cutting down the noise that the, the discs were making rolling back and forth in there. You can see that I've got the three dividers in there evenly spaced. There are more cutouts than that. If I wanted to move some of these dividers over, I could make smaller or, or larger sections. I've been trying a number of different bags for some additional storage without having to go down to the bottom box. This uh, little Husky bag is one that I like. It's a it's, you know, soft fabric, but it's got a firm frame inside there. Anything that you can find with a metal belt clip like this works really well. You can just hang the belt clip right over the side of that handle opening. This has a Velcro closure on the front, and then, you know, I've just got a, like a big towel jammed in there. But I could do keys, cell phone, wallet, all that sort of stuff on there. A few other pouches I've been trying, it's a similar, similar setup. Um, both of these, again, have the metal belt clips on the back, and then, you know, a variety of different little pouches and stuff in them to hold different things. This one is uh, made for putting like dog treats in if you're you know, training a dog. I didn't realize that was a thing, but I guess there's specific pouches made just for that. Again, it has the metal belt clip on the back, so it's really easy to hang. This one's even larger. I could fit a little jacket in there or something if I wanted, uh, the drawstring closure, and then a couple other little zippered pockets and stuff on there. So if you want to expand the overall storage without having to dip into the bottom box. There's a lot of options without having to do any modification. I'll show you how to pull out these dividers. If you want to move them around, they are a little bit tight and the corners of them are what's held in. So I found that I want to start bending them sideways as I like push to get that one corner out. And once it's popped free, it's easier to get the to get the second one. I wouldn't recommend pulling this divider out. Um, there's there's really no reason that you should need to do this, but I thought I would get it out so that you can better see exactly what's going on inside there. It's a it's a plastic sheet uh, bent up on that angle to hold hand, uh, cradle the discs and then and then pressed inside. It is cut larger. Than the, than the frame opening. So it is, it is a trick to get it in and out. You gotta be careful with the angles and work with it. You can see how the slots are cut to accept the edges of those dividers. So that, that's how it ends up sitting in there. And this is the type of soft material, the cushion, that's put in on top of that to do some sound dampening. Let's dig in and check out how I've got the bottom of the box set up. At first I, I, I felt like it was quite a, a burden to get into the bottom of the box, but the more that I did it, the more I enjoyed that process. And it is quick. That's not longer than it takes me to set down a bag and unzip it. I uh, One of the best experiences that I had with this cart was loading it up full of beers. I think I had 12, maybe 14 beers in here, which is crazy overkill. And I rolled up to hole one 
at our local course and I did just, just what I've done there. Um, popped the top box, set it down and said, hey guys, bars open, does anybody want a cold one? And it, it was just really cool to like see everybody's eyes go wide as they you know, realized that I had a nice cooler in here, stuff full of ice and beers. It's, it's, it's kind of a neat, it's a neat, neat setup. The super reflective square cooler piece that you see is what comes with the cart. Uh, I've got my own uh, second one sitting next to it, and I think that's just a great way to use up the rest of the space. Um, here's the microfiber towel that comes with, comes with the cart to clean off the scorecard. Um, other stuff that I've got in here is just a little bit of water, uh, hand sanitizer, a little extra pouch with like my normal, you know, dog poop bags and bag tags, stuff like that, and a pile of hand warmers. Of course, you know, I could have cold beverages in here as well, or I could put a jacket in there. Um, I've also, like that's where I'd put my wallet and keys usually. I don't need to access my wallet and keys during a round, so I'm fine for them to go in there also, um, or up in the you know putter pocket caddy. I've got my dog uh, water bowl in here, and this cooler even has another little pocket off to the side if I wanted to, to put more stuff in there. It's a, it's a pretty nice fit. This is just a super generic, I can't, you know, this cooler was maybe 10 bucks or something. Um, and I've got a couple couple others I've been trying. It's just a super generic size for for a cooler, and if if it's in there just fine. In the main cooler, as I've got it here, I've got a whole Nalgene laying down in there, and then an ice pack in the middle. Um, you can see, I don't have a whole bunch of cans in my apartment right now, so I can't load this thing up completely. But there's six across. You can see I can easily put another three. That's nine across the bottom. And then you've got the height that you can start laying cans sideways across them. Um, so you, you can totally fit uh, nine on the bottom, 10, 11, 12, and then uh, 13th across here if, if you were going full, full on with the cans and then drop a whole bunch of ice in on top of them. This design for this cooler is super simple and I feel like that's kind of an overall trend for this cart. The simplicity like to, in a way I have found to be like pretty elegant. Like I think it shows a lot of about Nathan, the, the guy that's designed and built these, is how he has like identified different things and then like found like very simple and elegant solutions for them. Just how clean this cart is overall, I, I think is really, really cool. You can see that this is a sort of a little bubble packing type material, um, reflective on the one side. And then this is that plastic that we see um, th throughout the cart, um, just cut into a little shape to, to give it some rigidity. So you can pull this out, you know, totally, totally clean the insert. And you just, it's, it's flexible too. So you can just flex it a little bit to get it in, in under the frame. And then it, it sets in its home. You can see, well, I don't know how well it'll show up in, in the uh, reflection there, but there's debris on the top of a couple of these and that's one thing that I did notice like as I'm you know s sitting on the other side of the box here the bottom of it is on the ground and may pick up debris and then when I go and set that box back in um, debris starts to drop in there like I've got some some leaves and stuff that have made its way in here so that's something to consider um, you may want to keep a little towel in there as well and drape it over the top to help keep those cans clean or um, another great option is is just flip your cans upside down that'll keep the top of them clean so you don't have little bits of dirt and stuff collecting on them and it may make you want to pay attention to where you're setting the box down if you're gonna sit on it like I am if you do that in a big mud puddle um, then you're potentially putting that all that mud is going to be dropping right in right in here on top of your cans or whatever you have stored. You can also run 
discs all the way across this if you if you were going out to you know sell discs after the round or something you could keep all your main discs on top and all those extras on the bottom that you want to sell and pop the top box off and open up shop you know or if you're going out to the field and you want to carry 50 you know 40 50 something discs then you can line discs all ac across the bottom as well you can see that the frame is recessed here on this box and when we set the top on, that's what it comes down and hits is this top square bar frame, which is super sturdy. It doesn't give the feel that you have to be gentle at all when you, when you sit down on this cart. It, it feels like it can handle the weight no problem, even of two, two people sitting on it if you wanted to share the seat. There is some play on the bearings on these wheels. Um, you can see here, I can rock that back and forth a little bit. That does cause some noise uh, on the course. That's maybe the loudest thing about it is the ability for those wheels to rock back and forth a little bit. One of the first things that I noticed when I was pushing and pulling this cart around was the noise. I was getting a lot of noise from the discs rolling back and forth and bouncing around and it, it bugged me. I mean, you've, if you watch my review on the Rovit cart, you know how I criticize its seat for how much noise it makes when it's jangling and bouncing all over the place. You know how much I hated all the noise that makes. This cart is not that loud, but it is pretty, it is pretty loud. Putting that uh, foam material in the upper box made a huge difference. It really helped quiet a lot of that noise. I still kind of went crazy after that. I was like, I've got to make it as quiet as possible and figured out that the lid is bouncing some as I'm going over rough terrain and maybe even the scorecard and that bottle opener, those can move around a little bit. So I tried a few different things to dampen that noise and more than making those things quiet, just using the cart more made me care less. Now, I'm not sure if I stopped paying as much attention to the noise that the cart does make, or if that kind of just got pushed aside because I started to appreciate other things about the cart more and more. It has an interesting feel to it with so much metal and in particular how much plastic is there. It's a lot different than you know pushing uh, or playing with a Zuka cart that has the fabric insert of some sort. The lack of fabric that comes with this bag is unique. You know you don't have a spot to put your cell phone, to put your wallet, to put your keys. There's no like dedicated little zippered pouch or anything like that. So it is up to you to figure out a putter pouch or to drop an extra bag in the bottom or some bags in the top or you know set a towel in the top and put your keys and wallet in that and that struck me as a little bit odd as well it's cer certainly unique most carts do have accessories you can buy or they come with um, you know somewhere to put your wallet and keys and and your cell phone and and that's not the case with this one so if you know that's something that you need to figure out um, what you're going to do with your phone, wallet, and keys. If you want to, you know, mount a little pouch up top or, or do something else. There's something about the finish on this cart that really grew on me. I, I enjoyed using this thing more every time that I brought it out to the course. The, ha having that putter pouch mounted on the top is great to have access to those two other discs and to have a little spot for you know wallet and keys stuff like that but having to do that lowered my satisfaction of like looking and at the car and interacting with it one of my favorite things is how clean how streamlined this is it's just blacked out all the edges are finished yet if you look at it close, you can tell that it's handmade, you know, like there's, it is a, I, I, it's like looking at a piece of art and better, being able to better understand the person that made that art piece. There, there's something really special about these carts. 
And that, that grew on me more and more. The interaction of setting the top box on and feeling that little, that little suction as it just like perfectly fits and slides into place and the satisfaction of pulling that handle in and having the the bolt just like perfectly fit in you know at, at first i looked at that as a burden oh i don't want to have to take that box off all the time to access whatever i've put in the bottom but then doing that action taking the box off and putting it on has like, like it's just it's cool to interact with i don't know a better way to describe it than that but the the satisfaction that i get from moving that box off and then putting it back on and then also just flipping the lid up and having it hit that magnet and stick and seeing just like a perfectly you know cleanly laid out uh, little display of the scorecard and the bottle opener uh, it's it it's cool like if you are watching this review considering whether to buy the cart and you found it aesthetically pleasing, you know, in particular without all the extra pouches and stuff that I've stuck on there, I think you're really going to enjoy it. A couple pieces that this cart comes with. Um, th this is a super unique piece here. Um, this is a little, you know, kind of a serial number piece. This is another, you know, 3D printed, uh, kind of a, a soft piece. It says what number your cart is. This one is number four. Like how, how cool is, is that? I, I think it's super cool to like know that it's like really a very limited edition. This thing's handmade. It's not a cart that's, you know, mass produced and sent all over the place. You've really got something, something special with this. And then also a little, little ace box tag if you wanna, if you wanna hang that on your cart as well. As far as handling out on the course, uh, I found this to be as good um, if, if not better than any ever other cart I've pushed or pulled. I brought this out to Slate Canyon, a course in Utah County, uh, which probably not many people that are watching this will know, but you can look it up if you'd like. It is one of the rougher hikes around. It's on a steep uh, side of a mountain and it is single tracks that are, you know, it's so steep, you take one step and your foot slides as you plant it. That's definitely not a cart friendly course. Uh, probably very few people have ever tried to pull a cart on it. And I brought this up and I had a friend come with me that never played the course either. And he asked if he could bring a Zuka and uh, I didn't discourage him to, which was maybe mean of me to do, but he got a Zuka through the course as well. Um, he, there was at least one point where someone else got on the Zuka and, and helped, um, helped him get it through a spot. It was some very rough terrain, but, uh, you know, getting this through that course really let me know that it, it can handle anything out there. Uh, I don't think there's a course that anyone would consider bringing a cart on that this would have an issue. The wheels on this thing are 14 inches tall. That helps a lot. It's certainly smooth rolling and the wheelbase, the width on it is 20 inches. So uh, I found it pleasurable to pull and push on, on any terrain. As far as durability on the cart, I have been not uh, careful with it at all. I've been quite rough. Uh, it has uh, quite a few you know, pinstripes from me dragging it through uh, some rough bushes and uh, it has seen plenty of rocks, dropped off rocks, get pulled up rocks, lots of scrapes and stuff. Um, it's seen mud, it's seen snow. It's pretty easy to clean. I didn't clean it before doing this review, so you can see that you know I have pulled it through some, some rough stuff. So you're gonna see a number of uh, spots with leaves and dirt and all kinds of things. Um, but it is, it is built to last. I'm having trouble seeing anything that could break on it. Um, uh, p potentially some of the plastic panels, if they got hit hard enough and if you were in you know, super cold weather, there's possibility that something could crack, but uh, even having it through the winter, uh, I've not had anything happen that made it seem even close to, to cracking any of the panels. Some of the comments I've already seen on like the unboxing uh, stream VOD that I did for this, are people saying they don't see the the value in it for 600 bucks it's you know a bunch of plastic and metal 
that's a that's a tough one for me to answer it is similar to like justifying how to buy a $500 pound bag um, is it worth it you know how does each person value every dollar they spend that, that's hard for me to answer whether this cart is worth it it's really going to depend on what you value like the things that I see that are the highest add the most value to this cart are the fact that it's handmade it's basically super limited edition there's not you know it's not manufactured in bulk and then shipped halfway across the world like the dollars that you spend on this go to you know a local person in the u.s that is making them by hand and has clearly spent a bunch of time designing it it is it is like trying to value, you know, spending your money on a piece of art. And that's kind of what I see here. Like, I feel like looking at how this is built, learning how to interact with it, it shows the dedication, the passion of the person that built and designed it. And that's something that, I, I, you know, I'm pretty happy to spend my money on. I feel, I feel good about the money that I spent on it. Even though I, you know, did get it at a pretty good discount, I wouldn't have a problem paying full price for, for this cart. That's, that's for sure. I appreciate y'all tuning into my review today. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a long one and, you know, super detail uh, showing off all the tiny little aspects of this cart. If you have questions on anything that I didn't cover, feel free to drop them in the comments or you can reach out to Nathan, the owner. He's been super responsive. Uh, I've sent quite a few messages to him and he's always been really quick to get back.